How's it going folks, Jeff Benjamin with 9to5Mac. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to install Windows 11 on your Apple Silicon Mac using Parallels Desktop 18. And the cool thing about all of this, it's officially supported by Microsoft. So let's walk through this step-by-step -step installation guide. Thanks for watching 9to5Mac. Be sure to thumbs up, click the subscribe button, and then enable notifications with the bell icon so you won't miss any upcoming videos. Okay, so here is my M1 MacBook Pro. This is actually a M1 Max MacBook Pro. So it has 32 gigabytes of RAM and you can see it has a 10 core CPU. So that's just important to know as we configure our virtual machine. So first of all, what you wanna do is go ahead and open up a Safari browser or your browser of choice. Go to parallels.com and we'll briefly look at two of the options that you may wanna consider. So the first one is the standard edition. It's 99.99, so hundred bucks but it is a subscription-based service. So with the standard edition, you're limited to eight gigabytes of virtual RAM and four virtual CPUs. So it is quite limited, but if you're just needing to use Windows for a one-off application that isn't available on your Mac, this is gonna be perfect for you in that instance. Now, for everything else, for instance, say you wanna do gaming, you're definitely gonna to wanna to go with Parallels Desktop Pro Edition. So as you can see, it's $120 a year, so 20 bucks more, but you get way more virtual CPUs up to 32 and way more virtual RAM. So you can see this is the option you're gonna to wanna to choose if you're gaming or doing anything more intense than just a one-off application. So the first thing you wanna do is go ahead and click download free trial. That'll download the installer. So once you do that, you can close your browser, go to your downloads folder, find the installer, so install Parallels Desktop DMG. Go ahead and click that to mount it, and then double click here, and then go ahead and click the open button to open up the installer. So the first thing you're gonna see is the end user license agreement. You can uncheck participate in customer experience program, and then click accept, and then it will start downloading Parallels Desktop. And this will take just a little bit. I have sped up a lot of the downloads and things like that, the installation process throughout this tutorial in an effort to make the best use of your time. Now you wanna put in your administrator password and then click the OK button, and that will initialize the Parallels Desktop. So now it is time to go ahead and download and install Windows 11. So once Parallels starts, you're going to see this screen, the Installation Assistant, and it has that one-click install option for installing Windows. If you don't wanna use this method, or say you wanna install a different operating system, you can click skip, and then you'll see the traditional installation assistant where you can install from an image file, or you see the various free system options here. So there's all fla different flavors of Linux and even Mac OS. But we're gonna click get Windows 11 from Microsoft to use the one-click Windows installer. So click install Windows, and then you'll see it start to download the Windows 11 for ARM ISO. And this is something that was not very easy to come by in the past. So the cool thing, this actually downloads that Windows 11 for ARM ISO to your Mac in the downloads folder. I'll show you that in a little bit. But here you can see the traditional Windows setup procedure. So it'll go in and copy all the files and everything. I sped all this up, reboots, and now we are getting ready to rock. So just give it a second and getting things ready. This will take just a little bit. Obviously, as you can see, I've sped this up multiple times over so as to not waste your time, but this is what you'll see once Windows 11 has finished installing. So you'll see installation complete. You just wanna click this, and here's where things get a little bit interesting because immediately it's going to want you to sign in to your Parallels account, and Parallels gifts everyone a free 14-day trial right off the bat, uh, but you only get to use that once per Mac, so use it wisely. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and sign in. I've already used up my, my trial, so I actually had to purchase a license, as you can see there. I purchased the Pro license, but you can see in the upper right-hand corner, you can manage your account settings and licenses and stuff like that. But I'm gonna go ahead and click the Activate button, and that will activate Parallels Desktop Pro Edition. So because I have the Pro Edition, I can use more memory and more CPUs than I would be able to use with the standard edition. So you'll see the Windows license agreement in the bottom right hand corner. Well, if you wanna read all that, feel free, be my guest, but you know how it is with that techno mumble jumbo. Just go ahead and click the accept button in the bottom right hand corner if you agree. And then it'll bring you to the Parallels installation successful page within Microsoft Edge, which is Microsoft's browser basically. 
Uh, so you wanna close out the browser in the upper right hand corner. And now it's time to update Windows 11. But before we do that, I wanna briefly talk about the two various options, either full screen mode or coherence mode. And we're gonna talk about the differences. So coherence mode is what you see. Let's exit out of full screen. So this little blue button, that enables coherence mode. Let me show you why this is useful. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on yes there. So coherence mode basically makes it so that Windows applications and Mac applications coexist within the same interface. So in Mac OS, when you click the start menu, it'll load up the Windows start menu within Mac OS. So you don't actually have two separate desktops. They're all combined into one. So you can see I have Windows system uh, loaded up there and I can minimize that just like I would a Mac application. I can reopen it like that. And I can open up other Windows apps from the start menu just like that. So I loaded up Steam and these are all coexisting coherently within the same interface. Now, that's the difference between full screen mode, which basically keeps everything quarantined in their own separate desktops when you can switch between those and coherence mode. So just something to keep in mind. So let's go ahead and update, click the start menu and then click settings. And now we're going to, well, <laughs> so it's gonna want you to activate Windows now. We're gonna talk about that here in a little bit, but we'll come back to it after we perform some of our updates. But here you can buy a product key or you can enter a product key. We'll talk about that in a little bit uh, because your parallel subscription does not cover Windows activation. So let's go ahead and click where it says Windows update in the bottom left hand corner and we'll click check for updates in the upper right hand corner. And this can be a very lengthy process depending on how fast your internet connection is, et cetera. So while that's updating, let's go ahead and open up Microsoft Edge, the Windows browser. And we're gonna go through and uncheck some of these little options here, stay up to date. I don't wanna do that. Start without your data, yeah. And I just don't like giving permissions to all these things. So I just uncheck everything generally and I skip and you know how it goes. So you can configure this however you want to, but that's the way I choose to configure Microsoft Edge, just like that. Okay, so we're gonna close that out now and go back to our Windows update, check the status and looks like we're still updating, still doing some installation. So this is gonna take a little bit of time. So. While it's doing that, let's go to privacy and security and talk about some of these other things. You can go in here and manage the privacy and security, go to general. You can turn off whatever you don't want Windows to have access to. You can do that. Just go to privacy and security and click on the various tabs there. Because normally when you go through the installation, Windows will present you with these options up front during the installation process. But because it's the one click option, it skips all that and you can have to you have to basically do it on the back end. So just something to keep in mind there. So good news, Windows has finished the downloads for a Windows update. So we're gonna restart and then it'll apply all the updates right now. So let's see it doing its thing. And obviously, like I said, sped everything up. All right, so there we go. So now let's configure CPUs in memory. So if we go up to actions, and go to configure, click on that. You're gonna see the configuration for our virtual machine. And what you'll see, you'll see configure for, and then it has productivity. That's the default configuration. Unfortunately, you can't change any of those options until you shut down your virtual machine first. So let's go ahead and shut down our VM. We could have done this you know, during the Windows update, but I just wanna walk through it methodically with you guys so you can follow along as easy as possible. So I'm shutting down and then I'm going to click the change button. And when you change these configurations, there's various ones, you'll notice that it updates the hardware configuration for you. You can do this manually, of course, but Parallels basically recommends you use half and half. So if you have 32 gigabytes of memory, you use 16 gigabytes of memory. Or if you have 10 processors in this case, you use five. Well, you can't use five, so you just have to round up to six, right? But the point is you can do that manually or you can set that up using the configure for option and you can see the difference between productivity and between gaming. Less CPUs with productivity setup, more CPUs and memory with games only. So just something to keep in mind as you configure 
And you wanna make sure you don't configure too many resources because remember your Mac still needs access and really if you configure too much, it'll actually be counterproductive and slow the entire machine down. So definitely half and half is a good rule to stick to. All right, so now we're back up with our updated configuration. So let's verify that. We're gonna go up to the start menu and we're gonna to go to settings and we'll go to uh, details about the device. Oh, here's that activation thing again. <laughs> It'll keep bugging you, trust me. So we're gonna go down to about, I think that's where it is. Yeah, there we go. So you can see 16 gigabytes of RAM and six processors. So basically that configuration did apply. So we're gonna have better performance than we did prior to us updating that configuration. So just something to keep in mind about your VM. So now let's go ahead and activate Windows 11 or talk about activating Windows 11 because I'm actually not gonna do it right here. Uh, I don't actually have a valid Windows key yet, but I am gonna purchase one. So in Parallels documentation, it seems that they're really like pushing Windows 11 Pro, although I have heard the Windows 11 Home key will work but I haven't personally verified that, but I've heard from various sources that the Windows 11 home key will work. Here's what you get if you don't activate, okay? So you can still use Windows like you normally would, but you get this little watermark of shame in the bottom right-hand corner reminding you and showing everyone else that you're using an unregistered copy of Windows, which is bad. So we'll click open store to get a new license from the Microsoft Store app. And this is a really easy way to do so, but you're gonna notice that it points you to Windows 11 Pro, which is 200 bucks, whereas Windows 11 Home, I believe is 130 or 140 bucks. So significantly cheaper. And depending on how you plan on using Windows, the Pro Edition may not provide any sort of benefit over the Home Edition. So just keep that in mind. If you purchase a, a product key, this is where you can put that product key in. Say you purchased it from a third party or such, you can put that key right in there. Okay, so enough about activation. Let's talk about downloading your favorite apps and games. So we're gonna open up Microsoft Edge and we're gonna go to steampower.com and download Steam. And install and install Steam. All right, yes. And we're gonna just obviously speed this up here and log in. And there we go. Okay, so I'm going to download a couple of games because I wanted to prove a point here. So the first one I'm downloading, Rocket League, of course, and then I'm going to install Capcom Arcade Second Stadium. You're probably wondering, Jeff, why? Uh, I mean, Capcom games are cool, right? But the point I want to prove with this, you'll see here in just a second. You're going to see an error message. And the reason you're going to see this error message is because Parallels 18 does not support DirectX 12. And any game that requires DirectX 12, like this one, will not run at all. Now, back with Parallels Desktop 15, they supported DirectX 11, which is great. And that's why you see many games on this list that run. Uh, you can go to the Apple Gaming Wiki if you wanna find that and see which games run well. But you'll also notice that here on the PC Gaming Wiki, there are lots of games, AAA titles, modern titles that require DirectX 12 and hence they will not run within parallel. So just something to keep in mind. But if you're anything like me, then that doesn't matter to you because you're all about the old school, right? Or at least if you consider Rocket League old school. Now here's another cool thing about Parallels 18. I have my Xbox wireless controller connected to my Mac prior to me even installing Parallels, right? The cool thing about Parallels 18, it recognizes that within Windows and you don't have to go in and add a Bluetooth controller after the fact because we already have it on our Mac, it automatically recognizes that. And I can see right here, virtual Xbox controller. I did not add that within Windows. It was already there. So that's really cool. Um, so we're going to go ahead and open up Rocket League is still downloading. Let's speed this thing up. While it's downloading though, let's talk about some additional details that are really interesting. So I mentioned earlier, it downloads that Windows 11 for ARM ISO. Notice in our downloads folder here, I have the install parallels, DMG, and then below that, here is the Windows 11 for ARM ISO. So that's really cool 
because this was something that really wasn't easy to access in the past. If you wanted a Windows 11 for ARM image, you had to jump through quite a few hoops. Trust me, I went through all the steps, but now you just install Windows 11 with Parallels, you get this nicely packaged Windows 11 for ARM ISO that you can use in other places, which is very interesting. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. Hint, hint. Um, but besides that, I did want to talk about some other aspects of the Parallels installation. So if you go to our user folder here, you can see Jeff and I double click where it says Parallels. Here is where all the files are stored for your virtual machine. So basically it's like a virtual hard disk that increases in size as that virtual machine gains more files. So as you can see here, it's actually growing in size because I'm downloading Rocket League via Steam. So if I show package contents, I'm gonna see that hard disk.hdd. If I right click on there, show package contents again, you're gonna see here it is. Here's the actual disk image you can see that disk image is growing. So that's the virtual disk. That's where all the Windows installation files, everything regarding Windows is quarantined to that location. Uh, so if you ever uninstall Parallels, you wanna get rid of it, it does not uninstall the PVM or the virtual machine. You're gonna to need to get rid of that separately. But the nice thing is it's portable. So you can actually take this, drag it to an external drive and take your virtual machine installation with you and run your Windows virtual machine from another Mac or just save it for a rainy day when you need it. All right, so we're still installing. Let's go ahead and add, give it some horsepower through the magic of editing. All right, so we're verifying now and we're almost there. So now it's time to play Rocket League. Here's the thing, don't expect amazing performance. This is still a MacBook Pro, right? And it is still emulating PC hardware and you're running an ARM version of Windows within a virtualized instance. So set your expectations accordingly. But gaming performance is decent, right? I am running almost at 60 frames per second here with Rocket League and I have it set to a pretty high resolution. Um, so, you know, performance is pretty decent. So you can see there, all my settings are set to high. And I'm gonna go ahead and just play a little bit here just to show you guys what it's like. So I have my controller paired, as I mentioned earlier. So yeah, I mean, it is definitely what I would consider playable. Um, not the smoothest experience in the world, right? I mean, obviously <laughs> it can get way smoother than this, but definitely I would say it's playable. What do you guys think? Let me know down below in the comment section. I also don't want to be narrow minded and think that the only people who want to use parallels are gamers because that certainly isn't true. There are tons of little one off apps here and there that are still windows only for some odd reason. And this can be a great way to, to run those applications if you need it. There are many other ways to do so as well that we'll talk about in future videos. Uh, but this is definitely one of them and it's super easy. It's basically one click in your pretty much ready to go. Now, about that Windows 11 for ARM ISO that I talked about earlier, kind of hinted at it, but I'm gonna download VMware Fusion, right? VMware Fusion 13, um, you know, they didn't have the sort of deal that was announced with Microsoft and Parallels, but because you have that ISO, you can easily load up VMware Fusion and install Windows 11 using that ISO with Fusion 13. Now, there are some hoops you have to jump through and I'll cover, cover that in a future video because it isn't by any means a one-click installation like it is on Parallels, but it does work. I have tested it. It isn't the smoothest experience, but I have a feeling that VMware, now that Microsoft is now on board with running Windows 11 for ARM on the Mac, I think we'll see some updates to VMware Fusion uh, with even better support, but it does work if you prefer to use VMware, they give you a 30 day trial. So that's kind of nice. And um, there's no subscription fees, at least yet, right? Um, so that's one thing to keep in mind. If you prefer VMware Fusion, it will work. I have tested it, 
but there are some things you have to do to make it work and I'll cover that in a future video. If you want to see it, let me know down below in the comment section. So ladies and gentlemen, that is how to run Windows 11 for ARM using Parallels on your Mac. Let me know what you think down below and if you like this video, be sure to check out these other videos right here. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.